from then on, in the beginning they call it Singapore Improvement Trust. That means they are dealing with all local housing, mm -hmm. housing in Singapore. And also town planning, I did the town planning. And... Uh, Your post is an architect or...? No, no, uh, post, yes, assistant architect, so oh. I went to come back. So I went to the, they call it Singapore Housing Board at that time, but in the department they call it the new department of Urban Renewal Department. And it was an exciting time. Uh, during my time it was, a, it was the beginning of the changing the whole of Singapore. They call it urban renewal, privatization of all these uh, spaces and so on. That was the beginning of the time. But I was restless. Restless in two things. Uh, Singapore is a very difficult country at that time. It's a survival of the fittest. It's a concrete jungle. Is it 60s? This is when I came back, 63, 64. It is very tough. And I was thinking, you know, what can I contribute? Doing housing schemes, was it is help. But that's not enough. I was restless. And I must say, what is the word? It's not rationalist as such. I was thinking of my own people, the underprivileged. The Malays at that time was underprivileged. But of course the political of that time. Because it's survival of the fetus. If you can get university, you get the university, you get scholarship. But when you don't have the foundation, very hard to get along. Very, very difficult. So what's the point of that, I say? And I want to practice. So I trotted to Malaysia. I went to Mara, knowing that Mara is helping the Malay Bumiputra to start their business. So I went there, I was interviewed, and I said I wanted to borrow money to release myself of Singapore so that I can practice. So this man said, no, I can offer you better. I'll buy you over from Singapore. I already served one and a half years by that time. You serve us. Serve us as one, he said. Now we are st starting the school at that time we called Mara College at Jalan Osman, PJ. To, to start a school in architecture. I said, I have no experience. I can't, how can I do that? Well, think of it, I said, they need you, there's not many architects. And then I follow of it, and so on. Then what gave me the courage is this. When I was in Melbourne University, where we were in the school, is one story, more or less, tin roof building, literal. And the lecture at the time, you imagine that it's after the war. Not many lectures even at the time. Many of the lectures are part-time. So that gave me the curiosity. If Melbourne University can do that, I can do the same thing too. So I did take the courage and I started not only starting at School of Architecture, but I was ambitious. I follow up the Bauhaus. I want to, I want to build Malaysian Bauhaus, which means School of other school of arts and the other four arts, um, you know, graphic arts and so uh, textile. You were appointed as a dean, or you know, I was a founder. Okay. Oh. Then of course I became the dean <laughs> and started that. And it was it was a fantastic at that time because during that Tonaja time, he was the minister of rural development. And he was given that task to develop Mara. And with him, we are not under education department. So literally, I was given free hand. Literally. All of the syllabus I had, you know, the whole thing. And I buy the equipment myself, all the equipment I want. How old were you? Was it 30 years? About 27. 27. Okay. <laughs> and I go to foil in, not foil, it was in 
England to buy books myself. You long hair. Long hair. I tell you, I have a freedom that nobody gave you the freedom. You can buy anything for the school. And the school is only, we opened the school, three rows of, of shop house. And why not? You know, AA, one of the best schools in England, is also shop house. So, you know, you have that courage. What if they can do, you can do also. You say, Polela. That's the first Polela. You can have the words. Polela, I think Polela. You know, um, I didn't stay very long. And uh, again, I have problems. Some other problems, which is private. But before I started the school, I had plenty of energy, not only doing the curriculum, starting to get people, interview people uh, who are very famous now. Some of the students are very famous, especially in fine arts. And, you know, we were, what you were in the training program, the group of us at that time are thinkers. What to do with education system? especially pro Malay system, privileged school, underprivileged school. So we started to think what the weakness and so on. That's why we formed the Mara Junior Colleges. Because the Malay College are meant for the privilege. We say, what happened to the poor people? And that's what it is. So we started that. And I built two Mara Colleges. And then we have vocational school as well. No, no, not only that, you know, we're thinking about it, education system and so on. And sometimes we have very advanced that kind of system of teaching as well, which they don't follow. Very simple, <clears throat> because we read somewhere, of course. It's not to have classes, the whole, from primary one to primary five, from form one to form six, they hold to be in an open space. Why? Because from junior college or pre-junior one, you can know what senior people do doing, so that you are accustomed to it. So when you come there, you are not frightened. That's a, a psychological system. And the classroom, we don't want it to be <coughs> one to in front of you. We're talking about, you sit anywhere you like, to be very friendly, you know, so that you can ask your teacher, you're not intimidated. And that's the reason, psychologically. So you are doing it not for physical things. You're talking about many things. About how to drive these people. How to expose these people. These people come from rural areas. And they're not exposed at all. They don't ever see books properly, you know, or library. And that's why you have to expose them. Exposure. And not only that, you don't ask them to come to be interviewed. You go to Kuala Lipes, or to every places to my have offices to interview these students because these students have no money. So you go to them. And when you pick them, you're not picking their brain so much. You're picking their attitudes, their ambition, what they really want. Because remember, most of the students, especially the, the college, they are the dropout. They cannot go to university. But university is only one. So they all dropped out, they're grade three and so on. So we pull them back to do a diploma, pre-diploma course. They sit for A-level, and some of them today, many of them are PhDs now. They're lecturers, head of school, head of everything. So you went village tracking? I don't do tracking sometimes when I go to this place. Say, you remember me? That was a lot. He just, yes. No, I don't. I'm in your class, did you? Just every one of them. Give you the feeling of greatness. But there are many more of those things at that time, you know, uh, which is not important. I don't know whether that's important. This is the time education was very precious, but very limited. Uh, the technical school is only Kuala Lumpur Technical College. That's the only school they have. And there was a beginning of one university coming up and there is university to work around. And there was a great controversy to the Chinese and the Malays and so on. During that time, it was a terrible thing. So now, it's 
education being liberalized, lucky you. Otherwise, you can never get good education, except if you have money, go overseas, of course. So we talk about curriculum in the next time, but you are talking about my education. How long was it with the uh, IBM? I think only one, two, two and a half years. Two and a half years. I didn't get along with something. You know, I'm rebellious. <laughs> uh, if something is confidential, you know, that's leading to riots and so on. So that's what I don't want to talk about. Okay. Because it is good. I mean, as you can. Because the man is still alive. So I can't do that. So, uh, young Dekat, you you think I put the yeah, involvement with UTM. The involvement with UTM is only two things. I did the master plan. Oh, okay. When I did SIC, I was very energetic. And somebody remembered me, I think. I don't know who remembered me. Somebody <laughs> told me they did. Not only I'm a teacher or founder for the school and teaching and so on, but also I do art planning for the campus. I do many buildings for Mara for free. Because that's my, my jewel, you know, I'm paying back, I said, you know, you're so grateful to me to liberalize me from you. You know, I'm paying back. Even today, I tell you what, I'm paying back. You see, in my house, open the repair shop of Ribbon Dahan, that's where we give scholarship to some people. This is paying back as well. I'm here today, I'm paying back. Isn't it? So, uh, that means the, the campus in KL, who was your hand? Yes, in yeah, the, the planning. Yes, the planning. Okay. Uh, but, but not from a firm, but when you oh, were no, still when I the, was, Yes, but not as a firm. Only as a firm, I got one school, which is a uh, school media. Then UKM? UKM is another matter. UKM, at that time, there was a congress. Uh, Budaya, the third congress. And I was called to give uh, my paper on education. And 19 over, I think, 1970. Uh, congress, Congress Budaya. Congress Budaya. I think so, 71. So we give a paper and so on. Yeah, you write it. And there was, there was uh, the starting of University of Bansa. And okay. they gave me two jobs, I think, over there. Oh, the beginning of yeah, UKM. 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 UKM beginning was at Pata, uh, Baru. You did the planning too? Huh? No, only the building, two buildings. Mm -hmm. School of Administration and School of uh, Library. Oh, okay. All right, so I think for the first question too, the yes. contribution to the number. Well, well yes. you can deliver it. Yeah. So before we continue, uh, I thought to see us. I thought he would make okay. it. <laughs> yes. Okay, any, any, uh, you can ask uh, questions if you like. Yeah. I'd yeah. like to know uh, uh, about your, your influence on the fountain head. Do you think it still applies today with the uh, approach? I don't think so. Yeah. I think there are certain things we have provided, as I said, that's one part of it I left. Uh, I don't want to go more detail. All I'd like to say today is. Uh, my head at the moment, our head here is a friend of, <laughs> that's what I don't want to say, is anything like that. <laughs> uh, because they put chora the tuka. You know, Mara is supposed to be the last bastion for Malay education. But because of this, you know, everybody wants to put status of university and so on. They and it elevated to university, mm -hmm. and now you tell me why is a drop out there to go? Mm -hmm. No way. They can you can't even go to Lim Kong Kueng because they don't have the money. <coughs> Kong Kueng is for the drop out. <laughs> you know and I know. Okay. <laughs> you talk to you. <laughs> Anything else, uh, Yeti, before I want to <coughs> Um, well, uh, you mentioned about uh, a group of people that were working with you. Yes. Uh, the They're all hand-picked by me. Okay. Then, as I said, they give me free hand. I don't have to go to PSC or whatever it is now. Mm -hmm. I go there and I just tell my head, 
this is candidate, fine. They go to Maharaj, fine. So you have people like No, no, as I say, because we have school of fine arts. We have textile design, they all like pick up the heads of, of each one. Do you remember some of the names? Yes, some of the can't remember all the names. Uh, I'll give you a later on. Okay. That's, uh, and it's fantastic at that time, you know, because the school grows. We win some competition, we win, you know, we won, and so on. It's fantastic. Very much like the house. It is, it is. It's what I wanted to be, to be like the house. Everybody know each other. And in fact, they know so much of each other. Kendrick is one of his Kendrick from Dublin. He is now, the last time I know that he was there. In fact, married to one of the students. So he was so integrated, you know, it's, it's fantastic. You have people like Jody Cole, who are the people? Fatima. No, IDM. Free. I wasn't IDM. Okay, uh, for question number two, I think I'm going to combine question number three, uh, which is basically about education. Um, the question here is about um, not about professionalism, but it's more about the person. Um, has our education uh, prepared uh, our students to be? Uh, you know, these people who understand different societies, uh, be able to live among others. Uh, I think if we talk about uh, students being uh, uh, tolerant of other cultures in Malaysia, if they can do that, I'm sure as a global citizen also they could do the same. But the question here is that uh, you've met many graduates uh, when you come uh, to your firm throughout the years. Uh, how do you find them in terms of uh, this aspect of education? have our education actually prepared them to be this kind of human being? The short answer is no. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I'll give you the story. It's actually time and place and, and so on, and political systems are different. During my time as a British system, uh, we do not have polarity in a way. Okay. Uh, so we all mingle all together. In my school, we are all together. In the British system, the British system, system more towards the global. Yeah. yeah. And in, in school, we just try to be the best, you know, mm -hmm. and, and participate in everything we can. But I must remember one of the important things, I think, even in the primary school, by the way, in primary school at that time, it's a terrible thing that you study what, what that thing is now is a good thing. It's tropical hygiene. What is tropical hygiene? Mm -hmm. Tropical hygiene is about malaria about cholera, about all infectious disease, which is important, you know, because to keep your well-being, you know, when you grow up, it's that every, right in the beginning, about remote men's law. But, you know, when you read things like that, what well, is typical hygiene you've got to, to learn in, in primary school? The other subject, which is, to me, is important, is, uh, they call it moral instruction which you don't have it at all. Moral instruction is not about Christianity, it's about behavior, about ethics, about what is right, what is wrong, about civil-mindedness, which in the curriculum of today is nil. They're expecting the parents to do that, the parent has no time. I said remember those values, and this is what we don't have civic mindedness and so you know uh, it doesn't mean that it's full in civic mindedness by the way it's not you know even that is not all that and uh, etiquettes in is what of other things you know etiquette is not only in cultural etiquettes but the higher etiquette for example that's not important do you remember what the subject was moral moral instruction instruction yes yeah. So it's more of a, of a civil, civil yes. gentleman kind of a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Except it yeah, teach me, uh, as I say, one of my uh, employers, you know, uh, staff was very good to me. And I remember him, when I got a scholarship to go to Australia, for some reason, he just, I want you to come out for dinner with me. And, and 
not the world, we go to his.